welcome to the Evian blog. So today I'm just going to show you guys a bit of a trick or a hack for your screwdrivers and tools. I'm sure you guys out there have seen the sort of electronic screwdrivers with the insulation on you so you can actually hold the shaft while you're working with high current or voltage. Um, it's quite a handy little tip when you're working in DB boxes and such. Uh, you get them in all the various sizes, uh, pretty cool to have, but do cost a little bit more um, than your traditional screwdrivers. What if you already have some pretty decent screwdrivers and all you want is some insulation? Like what I've done on this screwdriver over here, you'll see there is a piece of black um, sort of insulation on you. Now this specific insulation that I've used is rated at 600 volts and it's actually heat shrink. So guys, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to show you guys how to create your own insulated screwdriver. So you, if you accidentally, if you're busy screwing in a mains terminal and you accidentally touch this, you're not going to get kicked or shocked. So let's take a look at this quick and simple hack and see how it's done. There's a few things we need in order to create these insulated sort of screwdrivers using heat shrink uh, or to create this basically. Uh, that is, you need your screwdriver. Uh, let's say for argument's sake I'm going to insulate this little stubby over here. So I want to basically put a piece of insulation on there so you need to cut a piece of heat shrink to size. You slip the heat shrink on there like so, loose. And then you need some sort of a, a device for heating the heat shrink. I use this portable gas soldering iron uh, for all my heat shrink purposes. Why? Because I, it does come with the, the various heat shields uh, in the set for um, if you don't want to burn PC boards etc it can block off the heat from the rest of the board while you're shrinking on a piece of heat shrink in a box case chassis or anything like that then all you pretty much do is you heat the heat shrink up till it shrinks into place now bearing in mind if you don't have one of these guys you can also use let me just grab it here a lighter or such. I have a, another little lighter here which also works quite well with heat shrink. Just remember not too much direct flame otherwise you can burn the heat shrink which does break down its uh, insulation properties. And there you have it. Uh, nicely shrinked on, snug fit etc. Um, smaller screwdrivers obviously you need a smaller piece of heat shrink or a thinner piece of heat shrink. Um, then you can basically slide it on like so. You can take your lighter or your blowtorch and shrink it into place. It's really a, a, a simple procedure um, to create your own sort of insulated shaft screwdrivers. Because, um, I mean, you might already have a decent set of screwdrivers out there and you don't really want to go out and invest in buying a whole new set of screwdrivers just for the insulation sort of piece on there and there you have it now you can make it longer shorter whatever you like it's not going anywhere because the heat shrink sort of seals it in place but if you are concerned about that you can put some sort of a glue or um, silicon underneath here before you shrink it and then it'll actually seal it on quite nicely but um, I've never had an issue with it so yeah there's a simple hack for creating your own insulated screwdrivers pretty much if you get in there and you're busy screwing something and your finger slips down and touches on you you're not going to get shocked which is quite nice and quite handy actually of course uh, with that whole heat shrink thing if you don't have one of these or a lighter or such you could become a hooligan like me and uh, go with something along these lines this would work, but uh, be warned guys, this would probably completely destroy your properties of your heat shrinks insulation resistance. But hey, it's an option. Um, I use it for heating up large uh, diameter conductors and stuff like that, or soldering or brazing or whatever the case may be. So yeah, I don't suggest you get one of those. I suggest one of these little guys over here, your lights or whatever the case may be, and you'll be good to go with heat shrink. The same sort of properties apply to applying heat shrink to cabling. Um, it, it, it does have resistive properties. Um, if, however, you burn the heat shrink, the resistive properties do break down, and that's no good, as I'm sure you know, because if there's not enough resistance, you're going to get a short circuit.